You have a problem, bear patience. But together with it, build your link with Allah because He has the solution to your problems. And what is the solution to my problems? Wallahi, the owner of that solution is Allah. If I need wealth, He will provide. If I need anything, He will provide. You know, it's amazing how we take a look at certain acts of worship. A byproduct of those acts of worship happens to be things that we are looking for in our day-to-day -day lives. You know, when we seek forgiveness of Allah, it is one of the ways of earning sustenance, wealth. If I have a blockage of, say, my wealth, I feel as a human being, something is wrong. What is wrong? I don't know, I cannot earn. Or I'm earning, my money is getting wasted. I don't understand. My brother, my sister, perhaps you are doing something prohibited. Perhaps you are engaged in haram. Your money is being wasted. There is no barakah, no blessing. The Quran teaches us this going back to the story of the Prophet Noah. May peace be upon him, Nuh alayhi salam. Allah says that Nuh told his people, and this is in Surah Nuh, Amazing verse. Allah says, Nuh السلام, told his people, I told them to seek the forgiveness of Allah, for indeed He is most forgiving. He will open the skies with beneficial rain as a result. And He will grant you wealth and children that you so desperately want. Amazing. Now, it is wrong for us to say, I am praying because I need money. I don't have money. Today we were taught, if you pray, you will have money. Or if you ask Allah's forgiveness, you will have money. So I am only seeking forgiveness to have money. The intention is wrong. Because that wealth, that sustenance, those children are a byproduct. Byproduct means you will seek the forgiveness of Allah because you are remorseful regarding what you've done. You will pray because you consider it an honor and an obligation unto Allah. And Allah says, as a result of that, your door will be opened and we will start providing for you slowly but surely. Again, there was a youngster once after my speech, I spoke about forgiveness and so on and how Allah will open your doors if you were to pray and if you were to be uh, seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly. So three days later, the boy comes to me and he says, you know what, I've been praying for three days, I haven't missed a prayer, but I'm still struggling with the same problem. I told him, my son, how old are you? He says, I think it was 16. I said, for a few years, you have not been praying. Now you expect three days dedication, every problem will be resolved. That's not it. If you were not studying for so many years, suddenly you study for three days and you want to get a doctorate, a master's, whatever. That doesn't happen. It will come with hard work. Dedicate yourself. Perhaps, you know, fulfill it for a year and you see things start opening one after the other. My brothers and sisters, when you go through difficulty, sometimes you think it is bad for you, but Allah knows it is the best thing for you. I give you an example. People who have health problems, financial problems, family problems, any other issues that you have, you have an issue, you're trying to get married. You don't know if that marriage is actually going to work. I know of people who have fought to marry someone. They marry them, they have a child or two and there is a divorce. And then they say, I should never have fought for this. But you didn't know. Perhaps Allah created an obstacle in order to keep you away from it. This is why there is something known as istikhara. Istikhara meaning seeking the guidance of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala in a certain matter. What do we say at the end of that supplication? We say, Oh Allah, if you know that this is not good for me, it's not good for my deen, it's not good for my faith, for my present, for my future, then keep it away from me. Create a barrier between that and myself. So suddenly, many barriers are being created, but you still say, My istikhara was positive. It was positive. You don't know. We have a misnotion. People think when you Read this dua of istikhara, you will see a dream. That's not true. You may 
But 90% of the time you won't. It will either be facilitated, made easy, or made difficult. Read the meaning of that dua, and you will know how you will get a response. Oh Allah, if this is good for me, it is good for my deen, my dunya, my life, my future, my akhirah, my hereafter, then make it easy for me and give me blessing in it. So suddenly, the doors start opening. The next day you get a phone call. The following day someone tells you a good word. Then someone else tells you, my brother, I heard something nice. It's all positive signs. And things are facilitated. So the point I'm raising is, we will all go through difficulties, problems, issues. Why are they better for us at times? Ajaban li amri al-mu'mini. The Prophet ﷺ says, the affairs of a true believer are amazing. Because when goodness comes in his or her direction, he or she is thankful. It's better for him. And when difficulty and hardship comes in his or her direction, he or she bears patience. That is better. How many of us, in all honesty, we don't really pray properly. We don't really obey the instructions of Allah in a proper way. We are weak. And we say, I'm weak. I'm a human. You know, I remember uh, one man was telling me that every time I remind a friend of mine about the wrong that he's doing, he keeps, he keeps on saying, make dua for me. Make dua for me. Brother, stop your alcohol. Make dua for me. Brother, stop uh, the drugs. Make dua for me. Brother, stop the pornography. Make dua for me. Well, together with dua, you need to do something as well. Yes, dua is powerful. Continue making dua. Especially like for our children, for those whom we don't have sometimes absolute control over. One of the most powerful elements and aspects is dua. You want something, make dua. But I want to tell you, when Allah exposes you to something that you need to make a dua for, He's showing you who is the boss. He's showing you who is in charge. And He brings you to Him. Like I was saying, many of us, we're not ideal. But don't you agree that after we've had a big problem in our lives, we become better in terms of our relationship with Allah? You have a problem, you have a difficulty, you have a sickness, and suddenly you go to the masjid for the first time in so many weeks, and then you become regular, and then you lay, raise your hands and you say, Oh Allah, I'm crying to you, help me. I seek forgiveness for the evil I've done. Wow, subhanallah. What happened? Had it not been for that difficulty in your life, you perhaps would not have called out to your maker. So don't you see how it was a gift for you? Allah says, oh, I love you. Look at this worshiper of mine. The hadith says Allah becomes so happy with the repentance of any one of his worshippers. So you made Allah happy. But Allah brought you in. Allah roped you in through difficulty. Had it not been for that hardship, perhaps you may not have come through. So this is why that sabr and salah, they come together. They come together. You will bear patience regarding the difficulties you are facing. But at the same time, make sure that for the solution of those difficulties, you turn to salah. Where do we get this from? The Prophet wasallam. In several narrations, mention is made of how إِذَا حَزَبَهُ أَمْرٌ فَزِعَ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ When things used to overtake him, when a difficulty used to come in his direction, immediately he used to make haste towards prayer, salah. That is the best of creation. The most noble of all prophets, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. If he used to resort to prayer whenever he had any form of issues or matters that were of concern. What about us? How many of us, you have a problem, first thing you do, you wash yourself and you cry to your maker, Oh my maker, help me. Try it. He will help you. And continue. And don't say, why are you not listening to me? He heard you. He knows. He knows when the time is right. He knows what is better for you. Sometimes you want a deal, a business deal, and you're making dua to Allah. You want a job. You're asking Allah, Oh Allah, my job. Allah knows. Perhaps you might get that job, and as a result of some relationship you develop at the job, you might lose your marriage. So Allah says, hang on, that job is not good for you. We're not going to give it to you. 
And you're busy saying, Oh Allah, why are you not giving me the job? Trust Allah. He knows. Trust your maker. He knows what he's doing. He will give you the right job. Sometimes a person earns too much. They end up in the clubs. They end up drinking in the pubs. They end up wasting their money. They end up doing things that perhaps are immoral and so on because they've got money. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.